I'll be upfront with this one. This video might be weird. It's definitely not a foreign idea on this channel for me to get sentimental about something kind of random and odd, but even I gotta warn you, this one may sound like a stretch. And I don't care, because it's a weird fixation that's always tickled my brain since like 2005 or something, so I gotta talk about it. Anyways, licensed games. They are a fascinating piece of the video game market. Most people write them off as just another box on a franchise's marketing checklist, and that's true, but these are still games made by human beings. Artists, actually, which are like human beings but cool. Usually a licensed game is just commissioned by those franchise owners, usually giving them a ridiculously stupidly tight deadline and usually resulting in a game that's, uh, bad. But sometimes not bad. The mid-2000s was definitely the prime era for the schlock, though. Before that, licensed games had an air of quality to them. Obviously not all, but some of the best games on the 4th and 5th generation of systems were licensed games. I just recently played through the Little Mermaid game on NES, and that shit was kinda really good. But as those cubes and P2s came out, the licensed game felt more like an inevitability rather than an actual treat for the fans of the franchise. So thank god those fans of the franchise were stupid kids, right? Yeah, I can't lie. As a kid, I was drowned in these licensed games. I played a ton of these, but like, could you blame me? A game based on Lilo and Stitch? That was like a dream come true as far as I was concerned. My awesome gaming critic brain was still developing at the time, wasn't quite as massive and impressive as it is now, obviously. So did I enjoy these games? Of course I fucking did, especially because I came from an age of Flash games, so a quote-unquote big-budget console release felt like a blessing from the THQ gods as far as I was concerned. And a lot of these games have stuck with me, influencing my brain just like any other piece of creative media I enjoyed as a kid. It's easy to point to a game like Battle for Bikini Bottom, influencing my enjoyment of seamless environmental forward platforming design, or Simpsons and Run's influence on my love for concise open-world environments. But some games struck a chord with me, and more specific and more so wait Yeah, esoteric ways. So enter Fairly Odd Parents Break Into Rules. Fairly Odd Parents was definitely one of my favorite Nicktoons as a kid. That show did a great job grabbing onto my boundless childhood imagination. The idea of having wish-granting fairies was just such a neat idea. And going back to those early seasons really validated my love for it. The show is just really good all around back then. Character writing is really charming and funny. The more story-driven episodes are pretty over the top, but pretty damn engrossing too. Especially for a kid. If anyone was there for Channel Chaser's premiere, you know you know. So yeah, a video game based on the show at that time was kind of a no-brainer. Actually, before even owning this game, I had a GBA game called Enter the Cleft. A super simple platformer, but man, the nostalgia attached to this game, wowee. It's a doozy. Besides that game, most of my time with any Fairly Odd Parents gaming was via Flash games, which were admittedly kind of fun, but when I got word that a full 3D platformer for the show was coming, that made me beyond excited. I think at the time, me and my brother were hooked on Battle for Bikini Bottom, so if it was anything like that game, I would be one happy little boy. Of course, no allowance and money-type parents meant I was renting Break Into Rules, but hey, a weekend with this game was more than enough time for me and my brother, and uh, the game was okay. I actually didn't remember most of it upon replaying it for this video. A lot of the game is pretty whatever. Very, very messy and boring platforming with a lot of running around and uh, not much else. The presentation leaves <laughs> a lot to be desired. Which honestly is probably just because the Fairly Odd Parents has the most aggressively two-dimensional art style of all time. So poofing these guys into 3D is uh something. That's for sure. And the audio just sounds awful. I don't know why it's like this. I always thought it was my TV messing up as a kid. It's only natural to be afraid of your family, Vicky. Most people agree that avoiding you is sensible. Oh, that is so not true. We're very popular. Especially me. You're so irritating. The game revolves around Timmy being stupid and accidentally giving Vicky the ability to make wishes or something, and she keeps wishing for stupid things that poof Timmy into increasingly wacky scenarios where he has to collect shit to get out of. How inventive. Most of the levels are references to the show in some way, usually based on an episode or a location. You got like the Crimson Chin world, or Inside Vicky's Body world, or Video Game world. Seriously, you gotta like add it. <laughs> 
But really, this entire buildup has been to talk about one specific level, a level with a certain vibe and atmosphere that I'm going to attempt to put into words. So in this one very cleverly named A Dog's Life, you get turned into a dog, you know, like that one episode. The level has you escaping a pet store, traveling through a mall, avoiding Tootie, and making your way to a salon to cover yourself in mud to get her off your back. And uh, that's it. It takes like 20 to 30 minutes to beat and feels like a pretty less substantial level compared to the others in the game. But let me tell you, this single level has to be one of my favorites in any video game ever made. Am I being hyperbolic? I don't even know, man. I don't even know anymore. This level's aesthetics, its pacing, basically everything about it just fills me with such a unique sense of whimsy. I've said this about quite a few things in this channel already, but it just kind of puts me in a place. Some weird state of zen and comfort. And I've always felt this way, ever since I played it. I remember beating the level in just like one sitting, and it kind of just kept ruminating in my mind. I'd continue on with the game, or even my day in general, and kind of just always felt like existing in that level again. It was this weird comfort zone for me. I'd play the level over and over, kind of having this weird feeling of guilt or embarrassment about it, and I really, really don't know why, but it just kind of resonated with me beyond my usual understanding of that concept. It wasn't particularly fun or inventive or exciting or anything. It was just cozy for me. But I want to figure out why. To this day, I still don't fully get it. Was it just some specific time and place that lined up with my psyche in that moment? Children develop fascinations and obsessions that way all the time. I'm not sure. But even if there isn't a definitive reason, I just kind of want to talk about this level and sort of find maybe some beauty in it. I'd like to think of this as a kind of way to comfort my past self, like as if I could send them this video in the future and just let her know that his feelings towards something so weird and specific are okay. As silly as it sounds coming from some random level in a Fairly Odd Parents GameCube game. So one thing after replaying this level that's really apparent, especially compared to the rest of the game, the platforming is actually kind of fun in this level. Dog Timmy has this little hover with his tail, which functions as a really satisfying double jump. I mentioned it earlier, but I always had an appreciation for more seamless platforming within an environment. I'm not sure if there's a name for this, but sort of the difference between Mario Sunshine's vague platform floating stages and its platforming during its actual stages. I love when platforming in a world can feel like I'm just finding ways to parkour around it. And this level does an amazing job at that, actually. So many instances they make you traverse these mundane areas in really fun and clever ways. Jumping on boxes and forklifts, going through vents, flying over balconies in a mall. It's nothing like too mind-blowing, but it's a far cry from random springs and loop-de-loops 10 feet from a beach resort. It does a great job kind of engrossing a player in a way. It really does feel like I'm just a little dog exploring this building. And let's talk about the environments themselves, because I really do think it's a big part of it. This will be sort of hard to explain, but the way you traverse this level feels so aesthetically satisfying. Like, everything sort of makes sense. You're going between a pet store, into a warehouse, into a mall, into a big salon, and you're traversing these areas through kind of just like air vents. Something about the kind of claustrophobic spaces as a small animal feels really believable. It almost feels as if some of these locations don't even have front doors. You're just finding secret passageways between these connected buildings. It's oddly believable in a way. And when you're in these places, there is this really decadent vibe they give off, especially the warehouse-esque parts of this level. The word liminal space gets tossed around a lot these days, but this definitely feels like it fits the bill. These kind of empty, sort of quiet locations that you are simply visiting to advance yourself to the next area. And as you make your way to more open and lively mall aesthetic areas, it feels so oddly natural. The progression feels seamless. I might be sounding like a broken record already, but it's just so engrossing in a way. It's definitely a lot of little things rather than one super impressive piece. I love this room in the mall section. It's so over the top. You fly across these pretty believable but completely impossible mall center platforms. As a kid, there was something always so big and canyon-esque about malls like this. A mall was a pretty imposing place as a kid. It's easy to see why so many pieces of kids media made malls bigger than life. Besides maybe the corporate side of it. As an adult, I really appreciate a deliberate decision like this in the level's design. It's adorably nostalgic for me. Really emphasizes the bigger than life feeling. The mall also has this very simple and flat color scheme. This is mainly just an artistic choice to match the shows, but this lack of detail for everything really helps elevate your imagination a bit more. I think it just helps your brain fill the gaps a bit, which I feel leads to a more cozy vibe. I guess it might just be like a lack of sensory overload in a place where that should be so easy to feel. And this definitely also applies to the salon area. 
almost a sort of vague interpretation of what a salon is. Honestly, every area you go to in this level just fills some childhood dream of exploring every nook and cranny of a shopping center, basically of like any kind. I remember as a kid I'd bring toys pretty much everywhere I went and loved to basically make the entire store my environment for my imagination. The level almost felt validating in a way, like yeah, I'm not crazy, it is blissful joy to explore a mall like it's a 3D platformer. But all of this being said, the uh, actual level design mechanically isn't exactly top notch. Really simple platforming to sometimes really annoyingly specific platforming can be boring and or frustrating to probably most normal human beings. But normal human being I am not. I kind of find this random assortment of platforming level design oddly genius. It never feels too deliberate. It almost felt like the level came first and whatever way you were going to get to the end of it came second which is, inarguably, a pretty sloppy way to design a video game level. But we have plenty of well-designed video game levels out there. I definitely end up appreciating this level more for its stupid design choices. Also, the music. I've been playing it for most of this video, so you've probably already become pretty accustomed to it. It's kind of this, like, elevator-sounding doo y track. It's both really funky and also very unobtrusive at the same time, easy on the ears and kind of just pleasant to listen to. You can definitely tell there was a thought into the kind of atmosphere they wanted to give off with this song. I give the composer a lot of credit for it. And uh, yeah, it's basically just one track, <laughs> but it changes slightly depending on the area you're in. When you're outside the mall in the vents, the song has this muffled reverby filter over it, sort of giving off the diegetic feel like it's actually coming out of a mall sound system. It may seem kind of obvious, but it's a detail that a game like this would not need to consider. It elevates this specific atmospheric feel this level has a lot in my opinion. It definitely helps cement its cozy and comforting vibe for me. And beyond the level's aesthetics, the concept is admittedly kind of a cute one, and desirable one. Out of all the cool things Timmy does in this game, I don't know why, but I think being a little pup exploring a mall like this feels so much more fun than the others. I'm definitely not going to go on the record and say I wish I was an actual dog, avoiding all the stress and mental labor that comes with being a human being, just exploring without a care in the world beyond some crazy girl chasing me every once in a while. That'd be kind of weird and dumb, right? Well, uh, kid me definitely thought that. Haha. <laughs> yeah, ju just kid me. Yeah, jokes aside, I think the smaller scale fantastical nature of a concept like this is refreshing for a video game. By comparison, this same game has you traveling a virtual reality video game where if you die in the game, you die in real life, and exploring a comic book world as a superhero. I'd say the concept of, you're a dog now, go get dirty, is way different in its approach. As a kid, I always ended up finding a lot of appreciation for those atmospheric, lowbrow concepts like this. My favorite chapter in Thousand Year Door was always chapter 6, the train one. It had this relaxing and low-stake feeling, a breather from the normally super eccentric ideas that game had. I don't know what it is exactly, something more grounded and small felt more comfortable, I guess. I think creating a greater sense of place and atmosphere because of that comfort. As a kid, and even still to this day, I found so much comfort in these specific memories, the ones that have this distinct time and place, evoking a feeling, a sound, even a smell sometimes. And the feeling just reminds you of a relaxing and happy trigger in your brain. It doesn't necessarily even have to be something you can easily describe or remember off the top of your head. It's more the feeling itself that enraptured you. It's a feeling your brain kept, so it could remind you of what it means to be happy. People spend so long dwelling on that question of what makes you happy, what do you enjoy, and basically all facets of life. But I feel in some circumstances those answers aren't easily explained. Sure, I could go on a 15 minute spiel about why some stage in Mario 64 is so well designed and how it's my favorite level in the game, but that's objective and boring. I've been trying to come up with the words to justify my weird fascination with this funny dog level, and I feel I have in some ways, but as corny as it sounds, it's kind of just a feeling. It's a chemical reaction my brain has to help me cope with the dread and terror of being alive. There are so many times I think back to that time I was playing this level, that specific place I was in with my old parents' house, after school or on the weekends, and even back then, life was stressful. But for like 20 to 30 minutes, I was able to just exist in this level. It was mundane, kind of boring and simple, but maybe that's exactly what my brain wanted. And in a lot of ways, it has now trained itself to still want. I still really enjoy simple concepts like these. The high concepts that lend themselves to video games are cool and exciting, but even today, it can be so valuable to have some random stage in the middle of this children's show license game on the GameCube that is just a stage where you play as a dog in a mall. I hope this kind of put this weird specific fascination into perspective a bit. 
This might be the most out there video concept I've had yet, but I definitely wanted to talk about it in some way. Hopefully maybe y'all can relate. Maybe there's some random moment from a piece of media that you felt weird or embarrassed about fixating on. If so, I want to hear about it so I don't feel as crazy oops. Also, I do want to say thank you again for the constant growth on this channel. My Spongebob video just hit 10,000 views, which is just like crazy. And we're pretty steadily closing in to hitting 10,000 subs, which is also crazy, like what? And I've said this tons of times on this channel, but this is 100% still a hobby for me. I don't make a cent on this channel as of now, and if you want to support me, just go read my webcomic or something. That goes a longer way than a half a cent I would get in ad revenue would. Either way, just watching and commenting is more than enough support. It's taken quite a while for me to feel this way, but making these videos feels worth the effort. So thanks, that's a really cool feeling. Anyways, until my next randomly generated video topic, ha ha ha.